Welcome to Now We're Getting Somewhere. I'm Katie, and I'm a certified life coach, but I've also been a management consultant at McKinsey and a product manager at a tech startup. In other words, I know what it feels like to have a life that looks pretty good on paper, but doesn't feel as good as I want it to. I help my professional clients develop lives that are more meaningful, happy, and also more successful. And I want to share the same practical insights with you. Let's go. Everybody, today's episode is a rant that I would like to share for people who have energetically expensive lives. It's a rant that I have been sharing already <laughs> with many of my clients who have energetically expensive lives. It's a rant that sometimes I just rant to myself as I'm taking a walk when I feel really fired up about these big mistaken ideas that many people with energetically expensive lives have. So first of all, before we get to the rant, I just want to say, have you reviewed and rated my podcast yet? You probably haven't. (laughs) Here's the thing. I bet that many of the podcasts that you listen to are these big old podcasts with hundreds of thousands or millions of listeners. So you think, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't need to rate and review little me. And that might be true for those podcasts, but that is not what is going on here. Here it's just you and me and honestly, a couple of hundred other folks. So your participation really does matter. You have, you, within you, have the capacity to increase the number of reviews that I have by like 10% just with one review. Like that power, it is within you. Doesn't that feel amazing just to know that you are capable of such an impact? I spend at least a few hours of my time per podcast episode, and this is such an awesome free way to support my work and say thank you. I would be so grateful if you would be willing to press pause right now and write a glowing two-sentence review and rate it too. So that's my ask. With all that in mind, and hopefully after you've pressed pause (laughs) and written a lovely review and rated it, uh, let's go on to today's topic. So today I'm going to share, as I said, my rant for people with energetically expensive lives. And before we go full rant, obviously, I need to define that term. So let's talk about what I mean when I talk about people with energetically expensive lives. Most of you, if you've been around these parts for some time, you know that I really like to talk about energy like money. So every day we spend energy on all that we do on, for example, writing a podcast or, for example, putting together tax documents or, for example, convincing a toddler to wash their hands after a meal rather than running to the laundry room and taking things out of the lower cabinet. Just a couple of just totally hypothetical examples. We also, of course, In addition to spending energy, we earn energy from sleeping, from doing activities that nourish us, from eating food that nourishes us. And this whole concept of, you know, we spend energy, we earn energy, obviously there's a literal element to it. Like we do consume food and then we burn it with our bodies. Kilojoules are involved. But what I'm talking about is a little more metaphorical. This is more about the energy that you have to live your life. This is more felt on a deep personal level than measured in a lab. So you earn energy, you spend energy, and some of us, we have what I call energetically expensive lives. And this, again, this would be like some people have very financially expensive lives. They've got a big mortgage. They've got three kids in private schools. They're helping their parents out financially or whatever it is. Their monthly fixed financial costs are quite high. In the same way, some of us have very energetically expensive lives. Our day-to-day lives, they cost us a lot of energy. We have high energy fixed costs. So I'll give some more specific examples here of some of my clients who find themselves in situations where they have an energetically expensive life. Many of them, probably most of them, have some sort of job, sometimes a quite energetically expensive job, and then they've got some other stuff. (laughs) They've got one, two, three kids. Some of those kids are young, and young kids, from personal experience, can be a lot. Those kids might be off for the summer, or they're homesick, and my clients are dealing with them while also trying to do everything else they've got going on. Or some of those kids are neurodivergent, or they need therapy or developmental support. 
Some of my clients are also supporting a spouse who needs a lot of support for mental health reasons or physical health reasons. Some of them are supporting aging parents who need a lot of support. They've got a house that, for whatever reason, needs a lot of support. So these people, they have got two, three, four, five big (laughs) energy expenses in their lives. Their monthly energy fixed costs are just huge. They may come to me in energy debt, which just means that they have been chronically spending more than they make energy-wise, often for years or decades. And you can go back to freaking episode one of this podcast, the first episode ever, if you want to talk more about energy debt. Or if they're not in energy debt, they definitely don't have much of an energetic nest egg. They don't have much in the bank. They're really month to month in terms of energy. So if that feels like you, If you've got some big energy expenses all the time, if you've got a very energetically expensive life, welcome. Please settle in. You are in the right place, my friend. Partially because I work with people like you a lot, many days of the week. And also because I get it personally. I am going to raise my hand here. I have gone through some very energetically expensive years recently. I've talked about it on the podcast, but I've got two young kids. One of them has epilepsy and a lot of developmental challenges. That's taken up a lot of my time and attention and, frankly, stress the past few years. And that combined with things like I work. We did a very large home renovation. (laughs) Also, you know, just one huge energy expense recently was we took my kids to Portugal to visit my lovely in-laws who live there. And my son's seizures came back in a very dramatic way (laughs) when we were over there. It was a a huge mess. We had to spend some time in the hospital over in Portugal. Oh my gosh. So I just say that to say I have had some big energy expenses on an ongoing basis. So this episode is for all of us, all of us folks who have energetically expensive lives. So with that in mind, let me rant at you a little bit today. This is a rant in four parts. Let us begin. Part one of this rant is be freaking honest with yourself. Be freaking honest with yourself. The number one thing that my clients with energetically expensive lives need to be honest with themselves about is whether they are actually going to lower their biggest energy expenses. So I will say more about that. For some people with high energy expenses, they can and want to lower their big biggest energy expenses. So maybe, for example, most of your high energy expenses come from just a really stressful job but you are single and childless, or maybe you're just in like a super chill, lovely, happy marriage with grown kids, and maybe your parents are fine and your house has no issues and you have no health issues. So if you just come to me with really most of your very high energy expenses coming from a stressful job and you are willing We are going to get your hours down at work without sacrificing quality. We're going to lower your stress at your job. We're going to change your relationship with work. We'll do the whole shebang. We will lower your energy expenses. And depending on the person, it might not actually take so long. Again, depending on the person. But on the flip side, I also get people who come to me who don't have one energetically expensive thing. They have six and they actually don't want to change them. So that is not a dig or a criticism. And this is not me saying that they are making a mistake. And again, I am in the same boat as many of these people. There are a lot of elements of my life that are just not energetically frugal right now. This is just me reporting about what I find, about people's honest preferences, and about what we need to do given those honest preferences. So my observation is that these people have high energy expenses and they are going to keep their high energy expenses because, well, they like their reasons for supporting their parents, their spouse, their one, two, three children. They like their reasons for having their job, their house that needs a lot of care. And I am not going to try to change their minds on that. I want them to keep caring for their kids their spouse, their parents, their job, their house, if those are, and this is important, but if those are genuinely important to them. But if that is true, 
if they are not going to lower their big, big high energy expenses in the budget, is there a lot we can do together? Of course. Usually, I can still help them find ways to lower their energy expenses, get more energy than they had before. There's all kinds of subtle mindset shifts, very small ways in which they can change how they show up to work in their family. But if they're going to keep all those big things, all those big expenses, then the energy budget that they have to work with to do all of this coaching and shifting work with, it's going to be real, real small. It just is. We are not working with as much in the budget as some other people. It's not a dig. It's not a criticism. It's not trying to make you do something differently. It's just an observation of a reality. But the key here is that you have to be honest with yourself about what you're working with. Again, if you've got two young kids, if your spouse is having a really tough time right now, if your house is falling apart, if you have a big job on top of it, again, you don't have a lot to work with. The budget is itty bitty. The biggest gift you can give yourself, if that is true for you, is at least to not bullshit yourself about the spare energy you are going to have to improve the situation. It's so small. Your budget is so small. So you are not going to improve your situation as quickly as other people. Oh, I'm just laying that way into my body as I say it. It's true. It's just going to be slow. We're going to talk more about this in the rest of this brand. But if you don't have much to work with, there will be downstream implications that you will have to accept. And that's just the first step. Everything else depends on this. Everything else depends on you not bullshitting yourself about this. Look clearly at your energy balance sheet. Tell yourself the truth. Okay, so that's point one. Let's move on to point two. Point number two is you will not have a lot of energy to invest right now, and that will affect how quickly you build up your energy. I'll say it again. You do not have a lot of energy to invest right now, and that will affect how quickly you build up your energy. Okay, so using the word invest brings up another money as energy concept that I have, and this is the idea of return on energy or energy investments. If we want to feel better, we typically need to make energy investments of some kind, which give us some sort of energetic return on that investment. Like, it takes a little bit of energy. You have to spend a bit of energy to, say, even read a novel or take a walk or journal. But the energy you get out of it is hopefully more than you put into it. So part of the work that I'm always doing with my clients is saying, okay, what kinds of investments are you going to be making right now? And many of the people who have energetically expensive lives and find their way to me, these are impressive, smart, empowered people. And these impressive, smart, empowered people, they have all kinds of ideas about potential energy investments. They come to me and they're like, Katie, do you think I should start a 30-minute daily meditation practice? Katie, do you think I should sign up for a week-long Gottman workshop for me and my spouse? Katie, should I start a journaling practice and an exercise practice and make all of my own food, all of which would take me two hours a day? And I get why they're interested in this. Partially, all that in theory sounds really fun or engaging. And also, these people are thinking to themselves, oh, good, if I make big investments, I'll get my energy back much faster. But when I hear all those things, I'm like, no, 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 (laughs) please do not do that. Look, these are wonderful things. Love the 30-minute daily meditation practice. Love the journaling and exercise practice and making all of your own food. Love it. These are activities that will give you a wonderful return on your energy or ROE, if you want to be a real Katie Seaver insider. But also, you have no energy to invest right now, bro. Actually, most of the people who say this are ladies. My men seem to often have more realistic energy expectations. So I'm like, girl, you got nada. When you have $10 left over in your budget each week, you should not be investing in multifamily real estate. Is investing in 
a multifamily real estate property a good idea? Sure, sounds like a great idea. But only if you have some money for the down payment and also some extra money for when the water heater and the roof break the first winter. But girl, you do not have that money. You have $10. Do not do that. And before all of you smart folks listening to this get all squirrely in your smart brains and say, well, technically there are ways to buy a multifamily property when you only have $10 in the bank or when you're already in debt. Okay, fine. Sure, there are. There are some ways to get that done, and it might work, or it might totally blow up in your face, and then you'll lose the investment in foreclosure and have to file for bankruptcy. Look, you don't have to be a gazillionaire to invest in that multifamily investment, multifamily real estate property investment, or whatever other investment you want to make. But I would like to make sure that you have, again, more than $10 in the bank every month. So to take it back from the metaphor and back to the reality of people with high energy expenses, look, if you are working with so little energetic wiggle room every month, you're not going to be doing much. Can you make energy investments? Of course, absolutely. I want you to. If you're my client, we are going to talk a lot about what they can be, but we are going to make them so small so doable. They're going to be itsy bitsy because again, you do not have the energy to be doing big stuff. So you want to meditate? Great. It might be five minutes, once a week, twice a week. Maybe your first practice is just going to be canceling some meetings on your calendar at work so you have a little bit of extra time to think and catch up on your work. Frankly, it can take a little bit of energy to even just Think strategically about your time and your meeting schedule and your work habits and just not kind of like reactively show up to things that you are asked to show up to. So for some of my clients, that might be a really wise first investment. Or maybe we have an investment that doesn't actually require any extra time. Something like, you know, when you're walking around in your day, we just want moments when you can say to yourself, this is easy. (laughs) We just want to find moments that already exist in your day when things are easy so you can feel like more things are easy. But whatever we choose, and with my one-on-one clients, it's going to be very carefully tailored to whatever you need and what your developmental goals are. We're going to make sure it's super small. We're going to layer them very slowly on top of each other. And look, you are going to notice a difference from that over time. You will. But, of course, All of this does have downstream implications in terms of what you save over time. So look, if you can only invest $10 a month, it's going to take you a lot longer to save a million dollars than someone who has $1,000 to invest every month or $10,000 to invest every month. It just is. Ditto for energy. If you only have a teensy amount of energy to invest, then your journey to being where you want to be energy-wise, it's going to take longer. Will you eventually get where you want to be? Abso-freaking-lutely. But again, it's going to take longer. Again, that can be fine if you know your reasons and if you like your reasons. Every choice has trade-offs. And yours of having higher energy expenses, it might just be that it takes you more time to have more of an energy nest egg or to pay off your energy debt. But please don't use that reality that it's going to take longer to kind of go off the rails and make some huge energy investment to go to some kind of like get rich quick scheme. That's very likely going to backfire. It's going to end up wasting your time and energy. And then you're going to get very turned around. You're going to feel so frustrated, so overwhelmed, like you're flailing in the water. I have seen this so many times. There have been even moments when I have felt that. We have to come back to the core reality, to the sober reality. If you don't have the funds to invest, you just don't have the funds to invest. The best strategy in that circumstance, is to use what you have frugally and realistically. This is going to be, somewhat paradoxically, the fastest path through the woods, even though it's not a super fast path, at least some of the time. And I feel like telling you this is a bummer, 
I'm going to be honest. But I want to be someone who tells you the truth because I don't want you to get frustrated and pour all of your money, like I said, into some stupid get-rich-quick scheme that won't work. You don't have a lot to invest. It's fine. You will get there. You will. It just will take longer. But please be honest with yourself about the level of investing you can do right now. So that's number two. Are we enjoying this rant so far? I hope so. Okay, number three. Please stop spending energy bemoaning your lack of energy to invest. Stop spending energy bemoaning your lack of energy to invest. Okay, so number three, this one, it's hard. It's hard for me. (laughs) I have been known to bemoan my lack of energy to invest, but I'm going to say it anyway because we all need this reminder. We need to stop bemoaning our lack of energy to invest. It's a waste of our time. It just is. Our energy is better spent getting insanely savvy about working with the very limited energy that we have. We should just get amazing at working with that $10 budget, at going to the dollar store and getting all the things we need. That's really what we can aspire to, just incredible savvy frugality rather than spending all day complaining and miserable that we don't have $10,000 to spend this month like some other people. So that's all I want to say there about number three. Now let's move on to number four. Number four is you will have some moments and seasons when there is no energy to spend. I'll say it again. You will have moments and seasons when there is no free energy to spend. This is so important. So all of our energy expenses vary month to month, but I have observed that people with high energy expenses, they often have a higher number of sudden surprising energy expenses. Maybe, again, they've just got kids and spouses and parents and houses and jobs. There's just more places that a surprise energy expense could come from. That's, I think, part of what's driving it. And also, frankly, I think that these people typically just have very little energy savings. So any extra energy expense, any surprise sudden energy expense will often put them back into debt. They'll It'll kind of ratchet up their anxiety. So, you know, again, imagine somebody who has very little money to spend and then they have an emergency expense. They're going to be sort of more frequently kind of maxing out their credit cards. And this can be, again, very stressful for them. So... These people who we've been talking about the whole time, they have very little energy to spend. Let's imagine the best case scenario. They're following all the things I'm ranting about here. They are super honest with themselves about how little they have to spend every month. They're making the tiniest little changes, and it is actually helping. And they're not wasting energy, feeling upset about their lack of energy. So they are making progress, even if they are not quite where they want to be. And then, whoosh, they just get hit with a brutal few months a bunch of big energy expenses. Some big project comes up at work, plus the kids are sick, plus mom is in the hospital, and it just feels like they lost everything they gained. I can think of a few clients who this has happened to. And our brains can get very traitorous here. Our brains can be like, what was the point of all this I just did? I didn't even accomplish anything. It was all a waste. And I'm just going to say a very emphatic no to that. A very ranty no. No, 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 no. (laughs) This is where I feel strongly for a couple of reasons. First of all, do you think that you would be in better shape if you hadn't helped yourself even in these very small and limited ways before? No. You'd know. You would not be in better shape. Sure, you only saved a bit of energy. And yes, you did just spend a lot of what you saved. Maybe you just even spent all of it with that big energy emergency expense just now. But it was still better to have given yourself that small bit of cushion. It was always, always better to have that cushion, no matter how small. And also, you learn something in that process. You learn how to save energy in small ways that work for you. And that learning, that is hard. Figuring out what works for you, how to save energy for you, honestly, even figuring that out with all that trial and error, that 
takes time and energy. And now that you know it, that is freaking priceless. Because now you can do those things again. And you don't have to spend all of that time learning what they are. You already know what works for you. This is huge. And perhaps even more than all those two reasons, I just want you to know this is a thing that does happen. Our energetic expenses do vary month to month. We do have surprise energy expenses. It happens to everyone. And for the reasons I just talked about, my observation is that it seems to hit people with energetically expensive lives more and harder. You will have moments after you've clawed yourself back from energy exhaustion where it gets washed away by that big wave. It's okay. It's normal. It happens to everyone. You will pick it up again. And even though it feels like all was lost, it was not lost. You learned something in that process. And it was far, far better that you did it than that you didn't do it. It was far, far better that you did what you could when you could than you didn't do anything. It is never, ever a waste. Yes, even if the amount you had to invest was itty bitty. And even if you didn't get the return that you would have gotten if you had more to invest, It was all worth it. It really was all worth it. (sighs) Okay. That closes out my rant. I am really hoping that this resonates, team. I'm really hoping that for some of you, it's what you needed. That's the meat of my rant. But if you have high energy expenses, sometimes... It can be a little hard to focus. Actually, for all of us, it's sometimes hard to focus when we're listening. So I'm going to give all of us a summary to help our brains. Here is my (laughs) four-part rant in summary form. Number one, be freaking honest with yourself. If you have high energy expenses every month, tell yourself the truth about that. And tell yourself the truth if you're just not going to cut them or if you can't cut them. That's okay. But you need to remind yourself of that truth every day. Two, if you have high energy expenses, you likely don't have a lot of energy to invest in improving your energy situation. You're not going to be taking on these huge, amazing practices. You've got like $2 to spend. Please be honest about that too. And given that you have so little to invest, your journey back to having as much free energy as you like, it's just going to take longer. It's okay. You're going to get there. I know you're going to get there, but it's going to take longer. Number three, do your best to stop spending energy bemoaning your lack of energy. That's a huge waste of energy. (laughs) Four, you're going to have moments where even after all of your savings, a huge surprise energy expense comes in and it uses up a lot of what you've saved, maybe even all of it. That's so common. It does not mean that all of the work you did before to save was a waste. It was not a waste. And before we close out, let me remind you, you know, it can be super helpful when you have a very limited energy budget, a life coach. (laughs) If you don't have much energy to spend, you better make sure that you invest every freaking cent of the energy that you do have very wisely. You know who can help with that? Me, (laughs) your life coach. I can also stop you from making stupid energy investments. I can bring you back. I can bring your brain back on track when it spins out and freaks out, which is also very energetically expensive. I will just say my personal opinion is that working with me is a very good energy investment, especially if you have very little energy. So it's a, if it's of interest, check out my website, katiesiefer.com. You can learn more about how I tend to work. You can read testimonials from my past clients. You can read about my coaching philosophy. You can read my rates, all of that there. And above all, please know that I am rooting for you. My heart is with you. And I know that you are going to find a way to care for yourself and move towards what you most want and need. I know you can do it. And please know that I'm here. I'm thinking of you and I'm rooting for you. Until next time, everyone. If you really want to change in a meaningful, lasting way, that's when you need a life coach. Every client I've worked with has had incredibly personalized reasons why they're in the tired or anxious or stuck or uninspired state they're in. 
working with me can help you identify those roadblocks, which are usually blind spots that you genuinely cannot see, and implement a profoundly customized, doable plan for overcoming them. I have a very small, high-end, one-on-one coaching practice. If you'd like to be my next client, reach out at kdsever.com. I'd love to meet you.